This has been quite a whirlwind for me, but, but this has always been a dream job for me. And I remember the press conference like it was yesterday. The press conference ended. I got one of the first questions. This is where coaches go to die. And I said, well, boy, I hope I'm alive. <laughs> you know, I feel alive today. Rutgers basketball was an afterthought when Steve got here. It was an afterthought at the university. It was an afterthought in the New Jersey basketball community, and I think in the state at large. I didn't even know where Rutgers was, honestly. I can give you a quote from a coach four years ago. He said, Brandon, I know you've had some other job opportunities uh, that you've been offered. Like, you gotta take one. You gotta, you gotta get the hell out of here as fast as you can. That was the hardest job in the country, and no coach wanted it, right? But Coach Michael kind of just looked it in the eye, and, and uh, he stepped right up to the challenge. With any coach, it starts with integrity and honesty about the way you're going to approach things. Very early in the conversation, he said, Pat, if you hire me, you'll sleep at night. Um, and that means a lot. In, in this world that we're in, and I sleep very comfortably thinking about our men's basketball program. I told him I'm not a quick fix guy. There's no quick fix here. You know, when Shaquille O'Neal isn't walking through our door anytime soon. And telling Pat how much I wanted the job, I said, listen, Pat, I'll walk the Jersey Turnpike. If that's what it takes, you know, I, I really want this job. And uh, I believe in this job. Three seconds, no timeouts. Harper for the win. Oh! It counts at the buzzer. I've seen this movie before. I've seen him build Stony Brook up. So I've seen him take programs from nothing to something. He's built for this. And here's Spencer, and he buries it. Strikes twice, Rutgers has done it again to top rank Purdue. All of the big wins under Steve Peichel, they just keep adding up. I remember being on the corner here, giving out tickets to games and people just driving right by, like I had free tickets and, you know, like I couldn't drive by any faster. We did a tour with all the fraternities. And I was just trying to get out there, have a face to our program, but more importantly, just wanted to let them know that our players are just like them. Like, they need your help and they need your support. We gave out sandwiches, T-shirts, hats, flip-flops. I mean, you name it. That's kind of how we built it. And this couple of students came and then they started having fun and they brought their friends. And the environment now is as good an environment as you have in, in college basketball anywhere. I have 500,000 assistant coaches now. I get advice from everybody, and I love that. Now they talk about us in July. Hey guys, thanks for coming. Hey guys. When you've made progress and now you're looking to continue to climb the ladder, I think not reinventing the wheel is super important and you know living in the moment and being in the moment is what Steve really focuses on. I think that's Moat right there on his yeah on his scooter he's going in for some coffee. Moat you're in what are you getting today? What are you getting today? This crew is all here to see you. You get a little coffee so you can have a good practice is that what we're doing? All right good I want a large coffee, extra cream. Appreciate you guys quiet today. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good thing, right, boy? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. From day one, Coach Pico was so committed to this university. He embraced the university, he embraced the Rutgers community, and they've embraced him back. How you doing? Thank you for all of the uh, great work. I appreciate it. I've worked here since 2001, seen a lot of things. 2001. It's a great ride. I, you got us on right now. It's I, a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Very <laughs> nice of you to stop. I'll put you in the game if you can shoot the ball. Anytime you grow up in a family with 11 people, I have eight brothers and sisters. You are built with a drive and 
maybe a work ethic. You know, if you want things, you have to earn them. Guard's not here. Let's go. Guard's not here. The boy, I've been challenged all my life, and I like those challenges. And they're not easy, and there's tough days. My wife and family sacrifice the most. My responsibility is to my guys and my program and my family. My wife, Kate, and that's Brooke right there, and that's Kevin right there. I beat Kevin in one-on-one -on -one a lot. Proud of you, man. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> Can't guard me, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. I'll take you downstairs and work them over. Work them out, work them out. So every now and then I find time to work out my son, too. That's one of my uh, peaceful places. Everything's on a 10 count, so, all right. I want to rebound right under the basket. That's what I want to rebound. The second best shooter in the family. Although Brooke could shoot too. Run. Second best, second best after, after me. One, good. Time flies when you go game by game and you go season by season. To sit back and reflect, you really can't do it much because you got to win the next game. But when you do do it, you know, you're just very blessed that the people that have shared the journey with you are still by your side and understand the sacrifices that it takes to build programs like that.